Hi superhumans, hello everybody inside of the quarantine tribe. What an incredible community we have and what an incredible bunch of humans you've got together who are sharing and caring and presenting everything that they love. Guys, I am just so thrilled to be welcomed back for round two. You might notice I've got straight hair this time. How great is the feminine world where we can change these things? I hope you enjoyed last session when we did the lentil no meatballs. I would love to hear what you guys have enjoyed this week throughout the entire process. What productions, what presentations, what food things have you guys enjoyed the most? I know there's fitness on there, but I'm a little bit more partial to the food at the moment. So guys, what have you guys noticed inside the quarantine tribe? If you're not inside the quarantine tribe and you're watching this somewhere else in Facebook land, please, please, please search out quarantine tribe to see all the incredible, incredible content that's been created from across the globe to support each and every human throughout this process. Guys, Today I'm super excited, I'm always excited, but today I'm even more excited. Last week, uh, on Monday, we did the lentil no meatballs and everybody was raving about that one that got to try the actual product. Um, and today we're gonna do something that's super, super partial to my heart because it's actually two recipes out of my very own cookbook. Something that took me quite some time to create, um, but I'm so in love with it and I'm so grateful to be here presenting something from my book. I was actually um, in the process of moving right now and managed to find a box full of 200 of my cookbooks printed and ready to go. So I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to remind everybody that these are for sale. They're $7, they were printed and created here in Queensland, printed in Australia. I didn't go offshore, it was all done locally. And it's been an incredible journey creating your own cookbook and becoming your own author. But when I created this cookbook, it was before I actually had gone through the process of becoming a um, epigenetic profiler and understanding the, the depths of personalized health and how our nutrition is actually very important but also very unique and it's really very much about understanding what the individual requires for their utmost health carbs aren't the devil protein isn't the devil it's the time and the way in which it's processed and what part of the day you're able to eat it that actually has the greatest effect interesting conversations for another time but today what we're going to make is my vegan chocolate brownies so good these are an absolute favorite there is 500 different ways to do this recipe and I've adapted it ever so slightly. I'll be popping the full recipe in the comments afterwards. Um, but the original recipe has um, dates in it. Now dates, I know that there's a massive health thing and everyone's talking about how dates are the ultimate thing to add in for a sweetener that's healthy. It's actually a fallacy. <laughs> dates are actually not good for everybody. Actually dates are only good if Every single one of you beautiful humans falls into one of six health category, human categories that um, have specific unique talents and genius and all the rest of it. And there's only one of those six that dates are actually good for, good for. Um, whereas the rest of us, it actually kind of cools our stomach, it's too high in um, sugars, um, and it causes quite a, a negative reaction in the body. So for those health nuts that are trying to do the right thing, I know you're so close to getting it right, but we can do simple things like switching it out with sultanas. So all I did for today's recipe is actually soaked um, a cup of sultanas, some organic sultanas in boiling hot water and let them cool. From there, I drained out majority of the water and I just blended it down into a paste. Now, yes, dates are a lot more malleable and pliable. That's why I blended them so they go into the mixture much nicer. Just a quick two seconds tip um, on get, getting the best out of your sultanas so that you can really honor your body the most. So with today's recipe, I'm going to give you guys the basic standard and then I'm going to give you guys some variations um, as we go along. So follow along, you guys will have the recipe up there while you're watching the replay um, and you will be delighted at the variety in which you can do with these awesome brownies. So the recipe calls for 100 grams of ground almonds. If you don't have ground almonds or almond flour, it takes 30 seconds to make your own. And that's exactly what I've done. I just got my almonds, threw them into my magic bullet and created my own almond flour. 
very easy, very cheap, very effective. So all I've done is taken my 100 grams of almond meal, my 100 grams of buckwheat flour. Now you could use, and those who understand the genetic world know that every human is unique and what's good for you will be not necessarily good for another. So you can use things like chickpea flour, brown rice flour, black rice flour. Um, you can use buckwheat flour, spelt flour. And the cool thing is, is the profiling that we do actually gives you a cool app, your virtual health assistant on your phone that helps you to know exactly which ones are good for you all year round. So it's really simple and really easy to know whether an ingredient is a tick or whether it's a no, no for now. So today I'm using buckwheat flour because I haven't used it in quite some time and thought, why not? Why not? So we have our ground almonds and 100 grams of buckwheat flour in my bowl here. My potatoes, now sweet potatoes, you can steam them, which is really easy and effective, or you can bake them. The recipe I give you is um, steaming them, but baking them is just as easy and potentially more lazy. I was able to pop these in and run about the house and do a heap of cleaning and sorting whilst they were cooking. Leave them in their skins, give them a rinse, bake them at 180 degrees until they are good. This one here is already oozing out its own syrup, which means it's gonna be so much flavor in that one. So all we're gonna do is take our food processor and our spoon, a big spoon, and scoop the flesh out. So if you're steaming it, you're just gonna pull them out of the steamer and pop them straight in. Oh, look at this, it's gonna be, it's gonna play nice with me today. Just peel that skin off, pop it into the food processor. Would this one be nice? So guys, tell me, what is enjoying the most about this group? What is enjoying the most about this week? Have you been inspired? Have you guys been trying some of these recipes that all these incredible food masters have been sharing with you? Have you taken inspiration? Uh, I would love to know, are you the kind of person that follows the recipe? Or are you kind of like myself, and I know Aria, one of my other favorite sister from another Mr. Chefs in here, She's like me, we see a recipe and we just kind of go with the flow as to what we feel we want to do with that one. Little tip with my sweet potatoes, guys, is I did weigh them beforehand and I just put um, 20 grams more. Luckily, my two potatoes were perfect size and I ended up getting um, 20, 30 grams more so that when I peel the flesh off, uh, the skin off, I've got exactly what I want in my um, 600 grams of sweet potato. So I'm gonna pop that in there. To keep it simple, we are gonna blend these down, but if you have a look, my coconut oil, even though it's warm here in Australia, in Queensland, it's still quite congealed. So because this is nice and warm still, I'm gonna throw my portion of coconut oil, which is two tablespoons, straight into that bad boy, and the heat of that is going to cool it down. I am also going to throw straight in my vanilla. How good is vanilla? I just want to bathe in it. It's just amazing. We're also going to puree it with the sultanas. Now, if you haven't got a food processor, you can do yourself an awesome bicep. This is in, this, we're blending the fitness in here now, guys. We could do a totally do a bicep workout and do some mashing with a potato masher if you wish to. Or you can use a magic bullet. You just may have to do each section at a time. So we've got in there our oil. We've got in there our sweet potato. We have our sultana puree or dates if you really, 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 really want to stay with dates. We're going to give that a mix first. I'm going to duck off camera for 30 seconds. Don't have an extension cable. Meh. We're going to give that a quick blend. You guys have got me. So, give it a quick blend. Oh, nice and smooth. We're gonna go and we're gonna add in our cacao powder now. Do you guys know that cacao powder is one of the most natural sources, most purest sources of magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, so much more. Hey Robin, so much more. Cacao powder is like golden and the cacao bean used to actually be traded as a currency and the pharaohs used to be buried with cacao beans in the tomb with them because it was rated to be such a glorious um, commodity. So we're going to throw our cacao powder in there. 
and we're going to throw a bit of our sweetener in there as well. So you can use whatever you like. The sweet potatoes are going to be quite sweet as it is, okay? Hey, hey, sweet potato is going to be nice and sweet as it is. That's why I chose to roast it. Now, your sweetener can be whatever your heart desires. I'm going to use a little bit of organic maple syrup. Maple syrup is actually not the devil. If it's organic, it actually has some incredible phytonutrients. So it has some incredible minerals in it. Um, raw honey also has some incredible minerals in it and um, vitamins and whatnot. So I'm going to add um, two tablespoons of that. Now, once you've mixed this, taste it, guys. It's your brownie. Taste it. See if it's sweet enough, if it needs a little bit more. Feel free to do things like add some cinnamon to this as well. I love my cinnamon. So the other sweetener you can be using is coconut sugar. You could be using apple puree. You could be using, uh, what else have we got? We've got um, stevia, agave, rice bran, or um, sweetener. Any of the sweetener you choose, you can absolutely use that. I'm gonna use two tablespoons of that as well. And the piece of resistance. I've found these lately and fallen in love with them, guys. I'm not product pushing at all, but I found this really awesome sugar free, so I've sweetened with stevia chocolate, and it actually has no dairy in it as well, which is awesome for all of our dairy intolerant people. So I'm going to stick half, it needs 100 grams in the recipe, so I'm going to stick 50 grams in the food processor, and then I'm going to sprinkle some over the top at the end as well. Throwing these all in together, pop your lid on. We're going to pop that on our food processor. Ooh, guys, guys, are you ready? Oh, all the chocolatey goodness. Now, there is no reason why you could not sit there and eat that as a chocolate mousse. Right? Do you get that? Right? There is no reason why you could not have that as a healthy, low fat, low sugar, chocolate mousse variation. But what we're going to do today is we're going to turn it into a brownie. And to do that, we're going to add in some flour. If you wish you could add egg to this recipe, there is absolutely no reason why you could not add some egg. It would go quite nice. It would make it a bit more fluffy. But I really want you guys to get... Um, oh, why is that popped up? I want you guys to get uh, a bit more of a fudgy consistency, right? Mm. Uh, how good is a fudgy consistency? Oh, off. Shana, by the way. Okay, so in there, remember guys, we had our homemade almond meal. And we have our buckwheat flour. We're going to pop that straight into the food processor. Yeah. Note to self, make sure the bowl is definitely dry. All your fingers. Clean up as you go, guys, is my biggest message as a chef. Make sure you're always keeping things organized because otherwise you end up with a mess everywhere. And a messy chef is a naughty chef. Okay, so that's in there. All we're gonna do now is blend that down again. Scrape down the sides and give it a good mix. And I'll show you guys the consistency in a second. I'm going to turn you this way so you can see that I don't disappear. Alright, are you ready? Are you ready? Hope you guys don't mind. I love singing and I will sing for you. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure the flour is off the edges. Now, at this point, you can choose. You can choose, my friends. Do you want it to be super rich chocolatey or do you want it to have a lighter chocolate flavor? You get to choose this and I totally invite you to decide for yourself. That there is going to be quite relatively chocolatey, but those who know me know that I am a chocoholic when I can be. And because I'm making such a beautiful brownie, I'm gonna add an extra tablespoon of cacao powder than the recipe. This is where you get to choose. The other thing you can choose is whether you want to make it a protein brownie. Yes. So, again, not product pushing, it's just all I have in the cupboard, is a vegan protein powder. Now, I don't recommend cooking with whey protein powders because 98% of them are not stable enough to cook without damaging the protein itself. 
Vegan protein powders, however, are phenomenal for cooking. They create a thicker consistency. They create more of a heaviness. Um, they're great for mousses and smoothies because they're thick in it, right? So when we're putting it in as a brownie, it's going to add a little bit more density. And I'm just going to put in a half a scoop. And the reason I'm not adding any more fluid is because I had a little bit of fluid in my sultanas back in the beginning. So a half a scoop in there. This one's a chai flavour. You can use chocolate or vanilla. And it just makes the most sensual brownies, guys. And the protein helps the, the, um, the body to slow down the digestion of the sugar from the sweet potatoes and make it a much lower GI um, brownie. Win, win, win. So pop that one in. Oh, poor lid. Pop that one in our machine. Another mix and we're going to pop it in the tray. Beautiful. And you know what's next, guys? We're going to make some vegan ice cream. Now, the reason why, guys, I am not vegan, but I make things vegan so that it means that it's lower allergenic and it's um, easier for everyone to digest and it's easier for people's bodies to accept. So I make things vegan so that they are just a little safer. So from here, I'm going to take my tray and remove the centerpiece of the food processor. Oh, look at that cake dough, guys. That is a sexy looking cake dough. Again, you could consume this as a mousse without cooking it. But when we cook it, it's going to end up being the most gorgeous, decadent brownies there is. Toss it through and pop it into the tray. Just using greaseproof paper. There's no reason why you couldn't make these into muffins, um, into a round tray, whatever you want, guys. There's no restrictions on how you use this. I'm giving you the base idea. I'd love for you guys to share your creations. Maybe someone else has made a beautiful recipe in here that might go well with these. Or maybe you'll take someone else's beautiful recipe and you might have this as dessert. You might have a complete quarantine tribe creation night and have all of the different dishes sweet and savory all right so push that one down into the tray i find baking paper to be such a love-hate relationship don't you we love it but we hate it at the same time all right push that one down now to make this even more glorious like I said, we're going to scrape some of this across the top with, you can put fruit, dried fruit, dried nuts, whatever you wish. I'm going to use a little bit more of our cute little chopped chips. Yum! Who doesn't love chocolate? Who's my chocolate favors? Who's my lovers of chocolate? Just a sprinkle across the top. Oh, oh, oh. And the other thing I'm going to use is I've got a mixture here of mixed nuts, seeds, dried fruit, and I'm going to sprinkle that on top as well. Because how good is it when you get like a, a nice roasted chunk of nut and we get some like dried pieces of fruit in there. Oh, you can also put some fresh strawberries, raspberries. You can have whatever you like. <laughs> whatever you wish, my friends, whatever you wish. Pat it down with a spoon to embed it within the mixture. And we're going to bake that into the oven at 180, 180 degrees. Now, our ice cream, super quick. We've got five minutes, guys. I'm good at talking underwater. Recipe number two is also inside the book. And it's how to make a vegan ice cream. Super simple. Super, super, super simple. Take your coconut cream. Coconut cream, pop it in there. While that is still cold, mix in with your whisk. Your, um, I'm going to use, you can use corn flour, but I really, really, really love to use um, uh, custard powder. Why? Because it's got the vanilla flavour in it, right? And when you've got the vanilla flavour in it, 
you've then got extra flavour. The ice cream is amazing if you make it with um, the vanilla because it gives it the more flavour and it makes it really creamy and velvety. Let me grab the rest of my milk. Now I use a mixture of coconut and almond just because it's my favourite. I've got you guys the recipe there. So, we're going to bring that in. We're going to bring it to the heat. We're going to thicken it. Into that, we're also going to add in our vanilla um, liquid because just extra vanilla -y is amazing, guys. In goes your vanilla. Don't you love? Has anybody else got like a favourite piece of equipment in their house that is not fancy, but it is like just that piece that you know works? This whisk nothing special but it doesn't scrape my pot so it's perfect for what we're using so all we're going to do is thicken this now i've got an ice cream maker but right now in the, i'm in the process of moving so i didn't get it so what i've done is i've made this um i've added my sweetener Whoop. so again with the ice cream use whichever sweetener you wish i'm going to use some maple you could use coconut you could use um stevia you could use anything to get that sweet, choose if this is the sweetness that you like. Then all you're doing is literally making the custard. And if you want, if you don't have an ice cream maker, the cheap way of doing it is create it, set it, cool it in a large tray like this, freeze it. Then you're gonna go in and you're going to break it up, put it in your magic bullet into one of your big cups, add a teensy bit more milk and um, blend it down and that will make it really really creamy and when you blend it down I'm going to pull it off for two seconds so we can yeah and I can show you guys here's one I created earlier and oh 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 look at this oh, oh it even did the curl Ah, uh, look at this vegan ice cream, guys, to go on top of your chocolate brownie. How great is that? Dairy-free, sugar-free. Yes, we're using maple, but it's a different kind of sugar. You can change it to whatever sweet you like. We are just about to hit our half an hour time frame. I hope I've given you guys enough food for thought to be able to create some really magical creations here, guys. This ice cream is just a base. Once you thicken it and freeze it, and bring it back out and you go to blend it if you don't have a um if you don't have an ice cream maker that's when you can add your other flavors so if you want to add in some fruit pulp if you want to add in some chocolate pieces some peanut butter some or even better even more health aligned would be almond butter who here gets almond butter from aldi it is the devil it's amazing so if you did almond butter and cacao powder through your ice cream you've got chocolate peanut butter uh, chocolate almond butter ice cream you're welcome you're welcome you can make friends with that kind of a dish you could take that to a we're coming out of isolation soon i swear people we will be and when we do if you take the um the, the vegan brownies and this ice cream with you to a dinner party i guarantee you will have friends for life friends for life because it's a treat that has no guilt attached to it, right? So that's thickened up beautifully. I'm gonna pop that in the freezer and I will be creating ice cream. Uh, I will take a photo of this once that brownie is cooked with the ice cream on top, my friends, and I will send you my love. <laughs> it's one of my favorite dishes. It's super easy, super healthy, low GI. It can be, given, it can be a favorite of all family members. And I know it's going to be a crowd pleaser. I would love to see your creations. What mixture do you put into your brownies? What fruits do you decide to use? What nuts do you decide to use? And what flavor ice cream do you choose? Mmm. The world is your oyster, my friends. Isolation is the perfect time to be playing with these kinds of recipes. Guys, there's also, there is the full schedule. If you haven't seen the schedule yet, there's a bunch of other incredible chefs, incredible nutritionists, incredible fitness gurus, mindset gurus, spiritual gurus that are doing some incredible content within this tribe and this community. There's also competitions. There's competitions, guys, for you guys to win some incredible, incredible things. So please use the links that I've attached into this conversation. If you would like more delightful conversations around 
humans, genetics, cooking, food, reach out to me. I've put my website in there. If you would like to get your hands on your own copy of the Naughty But Nice cookbook before I create version 2.0 and 3.0, then now is the time. It's only seven Australian dollars plus postage. From my heart to yours. Have a great afternoon, guys. I will post up the photos, the delightful photos, very, very shortly. And uh, I look forward to hearing your feedback. Love and light, guys. Love and light.